so I'm dancing with the bear when the landscapers pull up. From the corner of my eye, I watch each man watching me twirl in my suburban driveway in a tan corduroy tuxedo. A grown man playing dress up with a seven foot stuffed animal bear at two o'clock on a Tuesday on the Ides of August. Needless to say, the shame sweats rolled over me in a wave. Catching their eyes, I envisioned each of these men was my factory rat father, my grizzled, Holocaust-surviving grandfather, honorable, hard-working, bootstrapping men laboring for their families' futures. And here was I, suddenly cast in the role of Mr. Twinkletoes. No matter that the entire scenario was somehow as me as me could be, that I conceived the whole bit, prepped to shoot for a week, that the rain had finally broken, that I dropped my daughter at school and busted my back to build out the set. No matter that I could already picture the damn thing finished, playing over and over in my mind. In spite of all that, the shame had bathed me in gobs of hot sweat. And yet on I twirled in my dance to the gods of what? Absurdity, maybe. Even now, just thinking about it makes me laugh. The whole thing was so perfectly absurd, and yet somehow not entirely unreasonable at the same time. You see, ever since the pandemic, I've been painting what I call Temporary Cure for Existential Dread, a series of escapist abstract landscapes on wood in vintage porthole frames. When suddenly they started selling, I began to find myself at all manner of junk shops, flea markets, grandparents' houses moving to Florida. And soon I began finding these weird old statues that I began to paint. At first I didn't know what it was for. A lot of times I don't really know why I'm doing these things. I feel an intuition to buy this thing, paint this thing, and somehow I'll figure it out down the line. But it seems to me now that this growing menagerie of sculptures is almost the band of misfit collaborators I've been after. That my yearning for artistic community in the backwoods of suburbia has led me to construct my own from cast-off parts. A strange and funny sort of troupe fighting the fight for a rational thought and art and beauty in a world not really trying to hear it. In mostly subconscious pursuit, of this oddball fellowship, I have nonetheless purchased, stumbled upon, and otherwise procured, in addition to this gorgeous 75-inch bear, a stoop lion, several garden Davids, a four-foot Venus, a parrot and eagle, at least three leopards, and a leather camel. <laughs> to what end? I never really know exactly in the moment, other than to say that I'm after something. A feeling, a construction, a style of voice with which I can speak. A ridiculousness, a beauty, a misty idea I can eventually wrap my mind around and attempt to convey to others. In this way, ever since I was a kid going to the museum, certain artists just spoke to me, screaming at me from across the room from 100 feet out, like, wow, what is that? I want to see that thing. Even now, my favorite artists are the ones with that idiosyncratic style. And it's not rational. It just speaks to me in a language beyond words, whispering, you're one of us. We understand you. This is possible. To me, that's the most powerful thing art, or really any medium, can do. Speak to people who don't necessarily know how to fit in, and show them there are ways that there is a space in the world beyond our everyday lives where your quirks can become your advantage. Maybe absurdity is a means of expanding that space for as many people as possible, for connecting with that kid from 100 feet across the floor, for articulating the wonder of possibility. As for me, finding myself in the wilds of suburban New Jersey, outside the sexy sphere of cultural influence, I realized I'd better make my space what I needed it to be. Staring constantly at the scrubby patch of park behind our house, I eventually began to imbue it with the sort of mystique 
that I'd been after. And soon my concept of the exotic woods, a magical place to which anyone can escape, was born. Similarly, lacking the support of a full-time New York gallery, and with more and more of these painted-up sculptures lying around, I realized I could play with them on camera, discovering both a new branch of my artistic practice and a new means of selling my work in the process. You see, by now I know I have to dance with the bear, that no matter where I fall on the artistic spectrum, my factory father, my factory grandfather, my factory other grandfather, those landscapers, even society as a whole may likely never understand why or consider me right in the head regardless. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that the shame of being an artist is real. And it can, it can hurt. In fact, contrary to popular belief, it is not fun being called or considered an idiot over and over for being who you are, particularly by those you respect and love. But with that ticket already punched, I figure I might as well get my money's worth. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's easy. Dancing there, watching those hardworking men watching me, Laughing, every fiber of my being was nonetheless screaming to run inside and get back to slathering the paint in my basement. <laughs> okay. The truth is, art is not easy. It is difficult to turn your life into a consumable good. But, when you lay yourself on the line, as you do now, as I am now, live, certain things happen, and we figure it out as we go. The truth is, though, that if you don't put yourself out there, there's no potential for connection. There's no potential for exposure, and there's no potential for slingshotting you into your future. There is a... Difficult moment happening for me right now. I don't know if any of you sense this. It is tough coming off the top of the dome when you prepared something so long. Um, God. All right. You see, I come from a family of all my wife, my father, my brother, both grandfathers worked in factories. And the idea of being an artist for a living is so absolutely absurd to them that me standing here right now, going through this moment, is such a moment of victory for me and for my ancestors, I can't honestly tell you. Um, the fact of the matter is that there are certain moments where I have so much confidence in myself, and I have so much confidence in my art, and I have so much confidence in the world around us. And I just want to encourage everyone, regardless of your field, to whatever extent you can muster, for God's sakes, just commit to being you. Point yourself in the direction of your unique curiosity and go. Dancing with the bear can mean anything from showing a poem to a friend, to laying an idea on your boss, to concocting what has to be among the most ridiculous TED Talks in the history of the internet. It's about following your gut through an outlandish threshold you never imagined whether blasting off on a rocket to the moon, shaking one's tushy in front of an audience for the first time, or working your magic in your school or office or the metalist factory in the state of New Jersey. And why? Because all of us, my mother, my father, those landscapers, 
Each of us yearns to bring our ideas to life, to create our own realities and leave something lasting, irrespective of its nature. In this way, all of us are artists. The only difference is not some God-given genius, immaculate technique, or highfalutin credentials. Like anything else, it's a matter of interest, opportunity, angle, and the brazen masochistic chutzpah to keep trying and failing and trying again. Thank you.